Well, welcome back to the RV Solar Channel. Look at that, we got a little sun poking out here. Today, we're gonna be working on a Newmar Mountaineer. It's uh, from the early 2000s vintage. We're gonna be putting uh, anywhere from 1200 to 1600 watts of solar on the roof. A uh, pretty nice 12 volt based battery system. Uh, customer supplied those. They are the lead time 230 amp hour batteries and uh, Victron Multi Plus 3000 solar charger, servo, all that stuff, and plus some other stuff like uh, installing a Micro Air Easy Start. No, actually, your customer's doing that. Sorry, the Micro Air uh, touchscreen display. I've got one of those that I'm supposed to be putting on my bus, but I just haven't done it yet. So, we're gonna do it on this guy first. Uh, also, oh, a Starlink that should be fun. We'll figure out how to get it all up there. But uh, without further ado, let's talk about how we're gonna do it and where it's all gonna go. Look at this thing. You know, a lot of people overlook these in the RV world, you know. This is 20 years old, looks great, platform is wonderful. You know, I don't think there's hardly any rust anywhere on it or anything like that. Built really solid, I really like these. So let's, uh, let's go back here where we're gonna be making some stuff happen here. So in this bay, we've got current inverter and these batteries, well, we'll talk about those batteries. Sorry, I was getting distracted. This is where we're gonna put the new Multi Plus and all the other Victron equipment. We'll probably make an L-shaped board to come in here and run everything, but it should work okay. We've done that before or maybe a cube shape, I don't know. We'll see what happens. That's part of the fun. All the main electrical runs are right up there above the window, so we should be able to come down here for, into the floor. Easy peasy, hopefully. Famous last words, right? Here's the existing battery bank. And let me tell you, I do not think it is in good shape. Look at that bulge there. Look at that there. I'm pretty sure these were left undercharged, froze, and there's nothing actually coming out of them. Nothing turns on. The only way you got really any power in here is you got to run the generator. Let's go inside. Let's see what we're going to do there. Oh, little teaser here. This is a little uh, Airstream Bambi we're going to be working on in the coming weeks. Hey, Zuki, what's up, bud? Where's Bear? Where's Bear? Is he around? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Where's Bear? He's trying to find him. Go find Bear. All right. So the plan is to put the uh, Micro Air Easy Touch or Touch Touch Screen, whatever, right there, where that currently is. It would be really nice to put the Servo display here. I just don't know how we get the data cables all the way up there. It's Maybe there's a chase through here. Talked about it with the customer. You know, it's all about that risk versus, versus reward situation. So we're gonna be in the back here, doing most of the work. Plenty of room here. So here's the electrical. This is the current inverter breaker panel. And we are basically just gonna bypass that. Or not, sorry, not bypass it. We're just gonna connect those two lines together. So. Thinking through some things. So we're probably gonna have to run some wires up through here. That's the gray tank vent there. This is for a washer dryer combo. So we'll be using that vent as the channel to pull wires down for Starlink or whatever else we may have going on. Solar, that sort of stuff. Down here, be putting the batteries. Customer rerouted this gray tank vent, or actually that's a gray tank drain at that point to uh, make a little bit more room on the floor, and then we'll build a little platform to go over those water lines. And then likely around in here is where we're gonna have to uh, make a hole to go into that bay. Because as you can see, we're right, we're right straight down. So that is the plan there. Should be pretty easy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and empty out that inverter bay. Uh, and maybe crawl underneath, see how I can see how the, the current wires in there, how those are running, that sort of stuff. But just uh, getting busy with some hand tools 
and pulling things apart and seeing what we find. A lot of you, if you're attempting this for yourself, you might be thinking, I don't know what's behind there. I don't either. But when you do this enough, you realize that there's always a way to figure it out. And to that point, sometimes there's not. There's always a way until there's not. And that's why it's important when you are kind of unraveling things, always be thinking about how could you put it back together if you had to. That's what I always do. 60% of the time works every time. The sunsets certainly are pretty out here. And this little bear has got muddy paws. What have you been getting into, bud? <laughs> oh, well, been work uh, figuring out our board in the, I'm trying to talk to YouTube people. And this is the way I'm thinking about putting it out or putting it together. Uh, this is gonna be the back one. And then this one is going to be up on its side like this. And what I'm gonna do, I think initially is, hey, stop it. I'm gonna screw these two together and go out and test fit it and make sure it can fit in there. If it can, well, then I'm going to screw it together and assemble it all together. If that doesn't work, I may trim it so that I can do that, or I'm going to have to put these boards together separately and then do a little bit of assembly out there. I like to try and do as much as I can in the shop here because uh, after 40, your back isn't just what it, uh, what it used to be. And even if you're not 40, save your back, you know. <laughs> no sense in uh, exerting yourself more than you have to. I've never thought of myself as lazy, just... Efficient. I try and be an efficient person. All right, new day here at the shop. And uh, here's what I got. Uh, putting the board together, this is roughly how it's going to go in the bay. It'll look something like that. I'm thinking this is what's going to work. A lot of cable tray, a lot of raceway here. But I think it's going to work out and it's going to look really slick. Cut a hole in the board for some cables to come in that way. We're gonna have a bunch more coming out of the ceiling here and hopefully flowing into here. They even notched out this a little bit for the shunt. And uh, I just got it held up by a, a board here with a couple of screws in there. That way it's kind of virtually how it'll be, if that makes any sense. This makes sense to me anyway. Uh, I can't connect up, you know, obviously I can't connect up a lot of things here. I'm pretty much leaving everything on this board unconnected. I'm doing all my connections here. This way I can do this in a lot easier uh, manner than I would be able to do otherwise. But it's I've gotten it about as far as I think I can get it here. So I think my next move is to bring it out to the Numar. All right, here we are out back of the Numar. Got my, oh, I'm getting a little parched. Better uh, get something for my battery drink holder there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, getting this board in there. Is it starting to make sense? Yeah, a lot of wires. Uh, these wires coming from back here, those were what used to be to the inverter. I was thinking about trying to pull them out, but the more I'm thinking about it, those do end up landing over here on this battery bank, which is going to come out because they're garbage. They don't hold anything. But it does connect us to the alternator and the rest of the coach system. So I'm thinking I'm going to use these for that. And they are fused appropriately. So uh, I'll just extend those into here. And... We will be good to go. And oh, the one thing I want to talk about here, because this is thinking about it more, on uh, on these 12 volt multipluses, here's what I do, okay? Uh, we talk about being pragmatic to a certain extent. So as a lot of you know, we we uh, treat and flatten these, these lugs. They're filed down, right? So it's a good mating surface. But I use a 3 8 inch lug on these. That's a big contact area for these. And if it's a 5 16 it is a bear getting that on there and off. And I feel confident that there's not a problem. And again, we do the FLIR thermal imaging on all this and we've not seen excessive heat coming from those. That'd be my pro tip there. Use 3 8 inch lugs on those. Well, no, uh, no real easy way to say it other than uh, this is taking a long time. <laughs> Uh, I'm just getting to this project today, and uh, it's getting into the evening now. Uh, you probably can't tell outside, but anyway, that's where we're at. So, let's uh, 
let's catch us up on where we're at. This is a platform I made to go in here. And the reason why I have these rails on it is to go over the water lines here, okay? And uh, we've got a couple more cables that are gonna come down here. Haven't quite figured out the plan there yet exactly. Well, we've got the solar wires and maybe Starlink, I think. Well, Starlink will probably stay up there. Anyway, I'm gonna get this in here and get the batteries in here and then I can get lights on in here so it'll be a lot easier to work. So that is what I think I'm gonna do. Uh, well, I got my morning coffee in here. Working in this tight space is not fun, but I still overall am having fun. So that's what it's about. Got uh, using these uh, lead time, 230 amp hour, the, I think they're called the plus batteries. Customer supplied these. Uh, we used to supply a number of batteries that were like this, so we're somewhat familiar with paralleling them, them up. It is a little tricky. We're just pulling off the diagonals here. We've measured the amp draw across running four of these like this in parallel, and they uh, do, what am I trying to say? They still are pretty darn similar. Like we've done them with SOKs. And you know, sometimes we use Lynx power in, sometimes we don't. When we're thinking about when do we do a Lynx power in versus not, a lot of times for me, it's about how is the system going to be used. If it's going to be high amp loads like uh, air conditioners or uh, other things like that for extended periods of time, three, four, five, six hours at a time, that's your plan, then a Lynx power in is really good because it's a high amp draw. You're going to definitely get some imbalances. So you want to try and even that out as much as possible. Uh, on something like this, it's just going to be probably, you know, microwave here or there, maybe an air conditioner for an hour, maybe two. Uh, but it, it's going to be relying on solar for a good portion of that at the same time, you know, because it's during the day, sun's out. So uh, this is where we landed on this. And uh, tell me where I'm wrong down below. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts. I always like, I always like hearing you guys. Thank you. Let's uh, check in here. We've done quite a bit here. I've got uh, the chassis power situation sorted here. Just connected uh, these two reds here that used to connect here. So that connects the both, uh, I believe, the uh, coach system and the chassis system together. So charging will happen here, and it will also char power the rest of the 12-volt system, which we've already confirmed works now. Uh, and then I joined that here with a, uh, just, you know, kind of one of these deals here, a nut and a bolt and a lock washer and some heat shrink over it. This is three aught. I'm connecting it to four aught, but don't worry, don't worry. I'm fusing it at 200. And uh, I think there's also, well, there's a pretty beefy fuse here, probably three or 400 amps, but that, I'm just leaving that in there. I don't see a reason to take it out. And then uh, also on the alternator side, there's, uh, maybe I'll show you. There are uh, thermal breakers, I think at 150 or 200 amps as well. So there's multiple layers of protection on this. Not worried about it one bit on the, as far as the chassis side is concerned. Got uh, everything wired up here. Got my labels on the links. Uh, I'm a little bummed out on this big beefy thing here. As uh, many of you know, we're using these die hole breaker combination uh, fuses. They just work so darn good. Or, uh, yeah, breaker switch. Uh, but what I'm bummed out about is this is the dual pole. Currently, the single poles are on back order. I'm waiting on them. So, customers getting the upgrade to the double, but I'm only using one. Big thing we have left to do is the breakers for the solar panels. Uh, I think that's going to go right here in that spot. I should have put that in there beforehand, but I didn't, so now I'm paying the price. Just wasn't sure how it was all going to come together. One of the challenges of working in this uh, tight little space, but here we are. Oh, let's also talk about uh, inside, what I've taken care of in there. Boy, is it windy today, and it's going to be a factor here in a couple minutes because I'm going up on the roof. Put some solar up. Here is what we did here. We've got uh, our two lines from the inverter coming up here. Again, they came up through there. We'll clean all that up, don't worry. Uh, <clears throat> but 
but then we use the aluminum splices that we do typically, and they're already in this box, so I feel that's pretty good and safe, and uh, in a box, all that sort of stuff, but yeah. Basically, just take the output of the inverter, and you put that into where the old shore power used to connect to, and then you take the old, what used to connect here, including the neutral, and you connect that, that's what's connected here. So the inverter just goes in line with it. And if you at any point you ever had to undo that, you just got to uh, disconnect these, pop them right in there, and then it's all bypassed. And then, uh, yeah, the HDMI cord is up here. Because this is gonna be a seven inch screen, we're gonna tap off of this 12 volt system here to power the screen. And I think the plan is I'm gonna make a, some sort of little mount for it here. I'm gonna do that yet. But enough talk about that. We gotta get up on the roof. It's getting windy. Still some daylight. I have hopes that this will be done today. We will see. Well, as you can see here, we got a lot of panels up here, but we are not quite done. Uh, that's the sun setting there into the northwest. Whew. Just a lot of work on this one. A lot of stuff going on. So back here is where the uh, vent is going to be, or that's the gray tank vent. And I'm about ready to pull up a little piece of fish tape, and I think I'll pass. I got to pass a Starlink cable up. Or what am I going to do? No, I, I got to make these trips work. We're going to pass... I think uh, some solar wires down and then Starlink up and then another set of solar wires back down. That's what I'm gonna do. Makes sense to me. Then uh, up here, I think I showed some of this before, but if not, you'll have to trust me. There used to be a satellite dish here now it's on the golf cart there, so the golf cart can get satellite while in motion. So that's gonna work out really good. And then I took off the Batwing TV antenna because that doesn't even work on modern TV signals, so that's gone. So that allowed us to get two more panels up here for eight total. The original project spec was six. We love doing more when we can. And that's what we're gonna do on this one. Uh, I like showing uh, the good. But I also like being honest enough to show you the bad. While I was uh, positioning some things, I did happen to break uh, this right here. But let me show you. I'm, don't worry, I'm getting a new one tomorrow. But this Lexan is so brittle. It didn't take much to actually break it. So while it is my fault and my responsibility, uh, maybe just be careful <laughs> if you're doing this. These This is 20 years old, so... Not a huge surprise there. That one flew off in a windstorm, so that one's new, but that one wasn't my fault. And we got the groundskeeper over there making a ruckus again. She's keeping the, keeping everything looking good around here. So I think that's all I'm gonna be able to get into this episode. I normally like to get them all done in one, in one week's time. Usually I start one on Monday, finish it by Friday. Shoot, last year we were finishing them by Thursday or Wednesday sometimes, but that was with JD and I both working on them. Right now it's just me and I'm having to run everything else, so it's what it is. Uh, coming up still is uh, installing the Serbo GX monitor, the Touch 70. We're gonna be installing a Micro Air Easy Start, finishing up a Starlink install, wiring up these panels. Uh, what else? Finishing up the electrical bay, uh, getting the alternator hooked up, all that stuff, and then testing everything. And then I think that's it. Then I can rest a day and do it all over again, <laughs> all right? <laughs>